success. It is totally possible to grow beautiful mushrooms in your own home, even as a newbie like me. Hey, Provident Preppers, I'm Kyleen, and today is a really cool day for me because we are going to harvest these mushrooms. Now these came in kits from Food and Forest products, um, food and, foodforest.net, foodforest.net is where you can go to get some of these tabletop kits. But I am thrilled because I am a newbie and I was a little bit worried about whether or not I was gonna be able to be successful. And as you can see, this is really cool. So the boxes arrived just the first part of January, but I actually opened them and set them out on January 12th, and today is January 26th. So it didn't take very long. Now, there's one that I didn't take out here that's still um, growing just in the early phases. It takes longer. This is a lion's mane, and it still has a ways to go because they all have different periods, right, where, of growth. But these are ready to harvest today, so that's what we're gonna do in today's video. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the king oyster mushrooms. And from what I understand, we just pop it off. I think I'll use a knife. <clears throat> there we go. Now, so harvesting is pretty easy, but what I wanna do is I wanna get a second flush from this. I wanna grow some more. So I am just gonna close up this top and I am going to cut a hole in the top of this. I'm gonna put it back in the box and I'm gonna start the process again and we'll see how many mushrooms we can do this time. So we'll see how that works. But in the meantime, we are going to get busy putting these together. So this is really pretty. It, it really is very, very pretty, isn't it? Um, so I'm gonna wash it, cause I always gotta wash everything and I'll be right back. So let's just start out here with really, I'm a novice and I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm trying, right? And that's how we learn and that's how we experiment. I've done a lot of research and one of the best ways to preserve mushrooms is actually freeze drying. And it just so happens that I have a couple freeze dryers. And so I think that's the route that I'm going to go. Now you can dry them, but it, you will lose some of the nutrients, right? And I'm thinking I want all of the nutrients that I can get. So for today, I'm just gonna freeze dry them. But I'm also, I've got these um, bowls, these stainless steel bowls with the plastic lids from Rote. Um, they're really cool because I can keep them in my fridge, but I think that I'm gonna put a little bit in the fridge for us to make with some fresh recipes, and then I'm going to freeze dry the rest. Now, um, I'm just gonna cut the top off. So pretty. So I'm gonna cut the tops off, and then I'm gonna chop all of these stems and use them in two different ways. I've got the king oyster mushrooms all chopped up, and I've got the heads, but then all of the stems, I cubed into these nice little cubes because I think they're gonna freeze dry really well that way and they will be totally ready to add to a soup. Now, one of the things I forgot to do was to weigh this all before I chopped it. And not that that's necessary, but I think it's really good to know exactly how much you're getting. There's about 11 ounces, give or take a little bit. And I'm going to just put it on this freeze dryer tray. I'm not gonna prep it in any other way, just because the mushrooms, I'm planning on using them in cooking, right? If I were doing it as a snack food, I might go ahead and blanch them or something, but I think that's gonna be great. And then put the rest in this little stainless steel bowl for my experimenting. Now, um, I think I'm gonna put this largest one in the bowl and cook with it, just the two larger ones. And the reason why is just because when I'm freeze drying, I don't want things to be too thick, but I'd really like to see how these 
turn out freeze-dried and these are the smaller ones so hopefully this will work out really well and so that I don't mix up the mushrooms I am I made these little tags so I could remember that this one's the king oyster and then I've got this to put in this cute little stainless steel bowl so that I could remember so there we go We'll put it in the freeze dryer and see how it turns out. Okay, this one has been really kind of fun. Um, this is the Gray Dove Oyster Mushroom. And it we planted it on its side, right? And you can tell, we didn't plant it on its side. We, we grew it on its side. And you can tell that it's just um, grew, grew standing up. So I'm just gonna try. And harvest it by cutting this. That's really pretty. All right, so they are all harvested. But now, what I want to do in order to hopefully get a second flush is I'm going to just turn this over and I'm going to put this on the bottom. And then I'm just going to cut it. And hopefully, we will get a second flush. Now this one is one that we had covered with the bag. So when I actually, um, so when I put this out there, I will mist it and then I'm gonna cover it back with the bag. We'll see what happens. These are nice and washed. And this just looks so pretty. See if I can get them all on here at the same time. Not sure I can. Maybe. All right, so this one is just about two pounds. Now I'm gonna cut these. And remember, I'm not the mushroom expert. I'm the newbie. So, I, but I think I'm gonna do pretty much the same thing I did before, where these beautiful flat pieces might turn out to be something really fun. And then I'll just dice all the stems um, and see how that works. Here are the gray dove oyster mushrooms. Um, I decided for the ones for the freeze dryer just to cut them in strips so that they would freeze dry well, I was a little bit worried about trying to freeze dry them whole. I don't think that would work well. But then the stems, um, they're just too fibrous and kind of tough. I didn't think that they would work well actually for cooking or anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put this in the fridge and then when I make my broth, um, I'm going to dump all these mushrooms in and just let it all cook and make this wonderful rich broth with that. So that's what I'm going to do. And then these, I'm just going to put them in the fridge and let's see what we make with them. These are the black pearl mushrooms. And hopefully, yeah, they said I could just twist it and those came off really well. Um, look how pretty. Those are so pretty. And these feel like they have softer stems than the oyster. Oh, that was really easy. It also means that very much by accident we could pull some of these off, but these, these look beautiful. Now, um, in order to get the second fruiting or an additional fruiting, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna close this up. Put it back in here. And cut this. There we go. And I'll keep it misted, right? And I'll see if hopefully we can get some more of them. Now I'm gonna wash those and be right back. We got about 20 ounces of the black pearl and the stems on this are super soft. So I think that it will be easy. Well, 
of course it's easy, it's a sharp knife, but I think it will be um, possible to cube some of these stems and just use them in a different way. Okay, these are ready to go into the freeze dryer and I did two things. I chopped up the stems up. They were really spongy, not fibrous like the other one. So I'm hoping it'll work well. Um, and then I just have the smaller ones. I don't know for sure how this will work out to do them whole, but I thought that was really cute. And then a few of the ones that were too big or misshapen, I just cut up and put on this tray. Those are the tops. And then in this bowl, I have what we're gonna experiment with, some of the big beautiful ones. And I'm just gonna put it in here and stick it in the fridge. Now there's one more thing that we're gonna do, and that is with the shiitake. Now remember, we harvested shiitake already, but some of these I didn't quite wanna harvest yet. So give me just a minute to put these behind there and we'll work on this one. Okay, with the shiitake, we just pull them off. Now, the other ones, like this one's not really open, but I'm afraid that if I wait on this side that I'm gonna lose some momentum with the second fruiting. So I don't know for sure, but I'm just gonna take all of these off. I'm just gonna harvest all of them. Okay, I love shiitake. Like, seriously, those shiitake mushrooms we made the other day, it was amazing. Even the texture was a little bit different than regular mushrooms because it, it was just kind of more meat-like. Now, this one, I put parchment paper under here, but it seems to have caused an issue. So don't do that. Don't follow my example. Um, so I'm hoping it'll still grow through this. Let me just give it a few slices just to encourage it. And then this is the only block that I had any mold grow on. And I, I'm sure it was something that I did. Um, but I cut it off and hopefully it'll be okay because in order for funguses to grow, you have the right atmosphere for mold. And that's why it's so important to have a um, sterile environment when you do this. But let's just put this back on. And I will go in and miss this afterwards before I put it out and see if I can get a second fruiting off of it. Now with the shiitake, we know that the stems are just way too fibrous. So I will just put those in a broth and make it so healthy and tasty. So here's the second harvest with the stems cut off. And we're looking at not very much, about a third of a pound but that's pretty good. I'll take it. What I'm gonna do with these, this is the black pearl, and I'm going to just slice up the shiitake and put it on that side of the freeze dryer tray. All right, these are just sliced and ready to go into the freeze dryer. The mushrooms are out of the freeze dryer and it took a little bit less than a day to freeze dry them, so not very much time. Now I'm going to put them all in these bags. These are different than from the Mylar bags that I usually use. I usually use a Mylar bag that has, um, that's totally Mylar. But because of the mushrooms, I'm using one with a clear front. So, okay, you, like you totally don't have to, but I wanna see the beauty and I'm gonna do some experimenting and I, it will cut the shelf life, right? It's gonna shorten the shelf life because plastic is permeable and mylar is not. Um, so this is the shiitake that I just chopped into little pieces. And this is a pint size bag. It breaks my heart just a little bit not to fill it all the way up, but I'm going to shiitake pieces. With these plastic bags, I'm not gonna reuse them at all. So I, I don't really care where I'm writing on it, but I wanna make sure that I label these really well so that as I experiment, we can do something fun. So there's an oxygen absorber in there. Super important, freeze-dried foods just will not store well without an oxygen absorber. All right, I've got a good seal. So that's what I'm gonna do with all of these. I'm just going to bag them up with an oxygen absorber 
and then we'll experiment and we'll see how this goes. They're beautiful. Like seriously, I guess I should have talked about this. So we did this little test while we were out there, but they should be dry enough that they totally snap. Just like that. Um, oh. Okay, so totally still has the raw flavor. Um, and I prefer them cooked, definitely prefer them cooked. And when they're rehydrated, they kind of, instead of having a fresh mushroom texture, it's got kind of a little bit more like a canned mushroom, which is fine because I'm gonna be using these in cooking. Okay, aren't these beautiful? They really look cool in these clear front mylar bags. Now, freeze-dried mushrooms have about a 20-year shelf life, which is fabulous if stored in a cool, dry, dark location. Um, but these bags, the plastic on the front, actually will reduce that shelf life by some. I personally think in the future, I will store them mostly in um, mason jars because you can just reuse those over and over again. And so the only cost you have for storage after your initial purchase would be the oxygen absorbers. And it's super important that you use those oxygen absorbers because otherwise they're only good for a few months. It, it, they just need those oxygen absorbers. Now let's talk a little bit about the nutrition. In my research, when I was researching the mushrooms, over and over again, um, you can dry mushrooms. You're gonna lose a lot of the nutrients, um, but you can totally dry mushrooms. But freeze drying them actually helps you to maintain between 95 and 98% of the nutrients. And mushrooms, that's one of the reasons why we eat them is for the nutrients that are in the mushrooms because they don't have many calories. I've been having a blast with the mushrooms, quite frankly. Um, I am learning so much about cooking with them and really enjoying the different flavors. So this has seriously been a really fun thing for me. Um, I made some brown rice with mushrooms. I made some stir fried brown rice with mushrooms, which was delicious. I made a soup that had the shiitake mushrooms in it and it, it like tasted like chicken in the soup. And Benjamin absolutely loved it. Like he is so on board with that. And then I also made a quinoa with mushrooms. And all of these had a base of my really good chicken broth. And so that helped to bring out the flavor. But the mushrooms are just a lot of fun. I'm really sad that I hadn't discovered mushrooms before. But now we are going to um, harvest some of the Piopini, I hope I'm saying that right. But we, um, I'm just gonna twist it off. So this one took a lot longer to start than the other ones, which is actually a really good thing because I had a lot of mushrooms at once, but they turned out so good freeze dried and rehydrating them works really well. I'm just going to finish pulling these off. There we go. And then I will start this again and see if we can get a second flush. And then this is the lion's mane, which is medicinal. And I'm just gonna pull it right off. And there we go. Same thing with this one. I'll try it again. Now I'm gonna clean these up and I will be right back. So it looks like we got about three quarters of a pound of the piopinis. And the recipe that came, remember my little black binder? So the recipe that came, one of them, um, recommends that you just slice them, coat them with olive oil, and put them on a baking sheet, just like, like this. It said, so for the smaller ones, half them. Some of the larger ones like this will probably want to quarter it. But that sounded like a lot of fun. So let's see how this turns out because all I'm supposed to do is coat it with oil, stick it in the oven, flip it at 20 minutes, and continue cooking it. All these mushrooms are split. Are split. I left the smaller ones whole, but some of the larger ones I cut in half or quarters. I've got olive oil on here and I'm gonna put a little bit of salt and then I'm gonna try and gently toss. And I'm gonna line them up and stick them in. Okay, 
mushroom fries. Nice. Are you you afraid? notice I always show up for the food part. <laughs> Mm. Pretty good. It's good. It needs some kind of a dipping sauce. Yeah. It's not bad. Just well, yeah. plain, but yeah, some kind of a sauce would be good. That's fun. Um, this is lion's mane, and this is the one that's medicinal. And I think what I'd really like to do with this one is to freeze dry it and put it in my smoothies. Now, um, I can't freeze dry today because I have something else in there. So what I'd like to do is I'm just gonna put it in the fridge and let it hang out there for a few days until I can do something with the freeze dryer. Okay, but today these guys get to come out and I'm gonna do two things. I'm going to make some um, Starbuck, I think they're Starbuck egg bites or something. That sounds really good to me um, with kale because I'm doing the little health nut thing right now. And um, they both look good. They've been in the fridge for several days. Oh, they kind of look just as good as when I put them in there. So I'm gonna make a mushroom soup and I'm gonna try those Starbuck egg bites and we'll see how that goes. The mushroom fries are all gone. And here's the cream of uh, mushroom soup. That's actually pretty good. Um, it has sour cream in it. I think I'd use regular cream next time. Um, but these look kind of interesting. Now I use the paper on them. The recipe just said to put them in the cup, but I hate cleaning the muffin tins. So I decided I would try and use this, but this looks like a whole lot of health. Let's see. Mmm. Okay, I like that one. Soup's okay. This one's really good. Okay, there's my mushroom adventure. They are all out there. I'm waiting for a second flush. Um, I got them from Field and Forest Products. If you want to learn more about them, fieldforest.net, and you can go and see what they have. These were the tabletop um, mushroom kits. Wow, so easy for beginners. I think my favorite of all of them was shiitake, and that's the one I think I'd like to grow all the time. It's funny though, a mushroom's kind of a mushroom. They each have different um, flavors or textures, just a little bit, but they're all really good. So my favorite variety is definitely shiitake. But what's yours? Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution.